Welcome to this presentation of the most recent published clinical evidence demonstrating the safety and efficacy of Philips or healthcare products. My name is Dr. Maha Yaakob. I'm the Director of Professional Relations and Scientific Affairs for Philips or Healthcare, and I'm excited to share this material with you. At Philips or Healthcare, we are committed to an innovation mindset that delivers products with meaningful results for your patients. Guiding this mindset is an integration of expert knowledge and a deep understanding of the factors that drive patient engagement, taking into account the specific needs and preferences patients bring to the daily oral care regimen. In order to establish a firm basis of safety and efficacy, we repeatedly subject our products to rigorous evaluation in a clinical trial setting. In March 2017, we published four such clinical trials and one meta-analysis in a special issue of the Journal of Clinical Dentistry. The methods and outcomes of each study are described in full detail to provide robust safety and efficacy data of our power toothbrush and interdental cleaning device, and to also support evidence-based dentistry. Before I dive into the published studies, it's important to know that evidence-based dentistry is a patient-centered approach, which provides personalized dental care that also includes the most current scientific knowledge. With that understanding in mind, let's get started and review the issue entitled Philips Sonicare, an evidence-based approach to daily plaque control and gingival health. There are five full publications in this special issue. The first two compare the effects of home use of a Philips Sonicare power toothbrush to a manual toothbrush in subjects with mild to moderate gingivitis. The third presents the findings of a meta-analysis, which took a broader view of this evaluation, where high-frequency, high-amplitude sonic power toothbrushing was compared to manual toothbrushing, as reported in publicly available literature. The fourth study reports a comparison of home use of a Philips Sonicare power toothbrush to an oral bead power toothbrush in subjects with moderate gingivitis. And lastly, the fifth manuscript reports the outcomes of a clinical trial designed to demonstrate non-inferiority of use of the Philips Sonicare Air Floss Pro into dental cleaning device compared to string floss. The first study was a randomized parallel clinical trial comparing Philips Sonicare Diamond Clean to an ADA reference manual toothbrush on the clinical efficacy endpoints of surface plaque removal, gingival bleeding, and gingival inflammation. Subjects included were generally healthy adults who were non-smokers, routine manual toothbrush users, with mild to moderate levels of gingivitis. Those meeting the criteria were randomly assigned to use either a Diamond Clean Power toothbrush or a manual toothbrush for a four-week period with a follow-up visit completed at week two. The examiners who performed all efficacy assessments were blinded to the treatment assignment of the subjects. The use of any other oral hygiene products other than the assigned toothbrush and toothpaste was prohibited during the study period. The results shown here display each of the efficacy endpoints in terms of percent reduction from baseline. Looking at the first graph, for example, the mean percent reduction from baseline to week two in gingival inflammation was 24.5% for the diamond clean group and 13.7% for the manual toothbrush group. At week four, the outcomes were 25.5% for the diamond clean and 19.1% for the manual. As you can see in the remaining two graphs, consistent differences between the products were observed for the two other endpoints gingival bleeding, and surface plaque. All of the observed differences between the products were statistically significant. To conclude, twice daily brushing with Philips Sonica Diamond Clean is significantly better than using a manual toothbrush for reducing plaque and improving gingival inflammation and gingival bleeding within just two weeks, persisting to four weeks. The second published study has many design similarities to the previous study. As the standard of care for daily oral hygiene remains a manual toothbrush, comparison metrics versus a manual toothbrush are key benchmarks in guiding evidence-based product development at Philips. 
Again, it's a gold standard randomized parallel clinical trial. In this study, the power toothbrush tested was Philips Sonicare FlexCare Platinum, and the evaluation period was extended to six weeks. In general, all of the other eligibility, randomization, and study conduct procedures were similar to the previous study. Similar to the first study, in this clinical trial, statistically significant differences between FlexCare Platinum and the manual toothbrush were observed for all efficacy metrics at each time point, week two and week six. However, it is important to explore the data here a bit further. As described previously, the outcomes are reported in terms of mean percent reduction from baseline. Looking at each of the graphs at week six for the manual toothbrush group, we see that for every metric evaluated, the percent reduction value is a negative number. A proposed interpretation of this finding is that subjects may tend to exhibit their more normal manual toothbrushing behavior as the study period is prolonged. In contrast, the FlexCare Platinum group exhibits rapid changes in all metrics by week two, which are sustained until the conclusion of the study at week six. There is a unique design innovation that we feel supports the dramatic differences observed in this study. The premium plaque control brush head used in this study is designed with bristles that are embedded in thermoplastic elastomer, a soft, flexible material rather than the more traditional hard plastic. This design change produced two very important effects. First, the bristles of the brush head sweep across a wider arc, providing more coverage per sweep. And second, it allows each tuft of bristles to move independent of its neighboring tufts. The toothbrush has more surface contact with more bristles in every brushing encounter. The outcomes observed in this clinical trial are an important proof point that validates the efficacy of this important design change. The third publication in the special issue takes a view of our key efficacy benchmark, power toothbrushing versus manual toothbrushing from a broader perspective. The central question was whether a wide body of evidence, rather than an individual clinical trial, demonstrated the clinical benefits of daily oral hygiene with high-frequency, high-amplitude sonic power toothbrushing in reducing plaque and gingivitis compared to manual brushing. As such, a meta-analysis was conducted using data extracted from publicly available clinical research reported from databases like Medline following a keyword search. The approach to this meta-analysis was comparable to that of the Cochrane collaboration and adhered to the PRISMA guidelines for reporting meta-analysis. Eligible studies included those with metrics evaluating plaque and or gingivitis and were of a duration of at least four weeks up to three months. Of all records retrieved by the search inquiries, 18 studies comprised of outcomes from 1,870 subjects qualified and provided sufficient data for inclusion in the meta-analysis. The graph on the left displays the outcomes for plaque removal, and the graph on the right shows the outcomes for gingivitis reduction. Each included study appears as a line item ordered by the first author of the study. For a given study, the standardized mean difference between products is displayed as a box, and the whiskers on either side of the box represents the 95% confidence interval. The bold vertical line in each plot, intersecting with zero, is the point at which no difference was observed between products. If the standardized mean difference of a given study lies to the right of the zero point line, the outcome favored a manual toothbrush. If the standardized mean difference lies to the left, the outcome favored the sonic power toothbrush. In both plots, the dashed line and diamond shape represent the combined comparison for each metric. As you can see, in both cases, the plaque removal and gingivitis reduction outcomes favored the sonic power toothbrush. It was revealed that using a high frequency, high amplitude sonic power toothbrush achieved up to 20% more plaque removal and 10% greater decrease in gingivitis than manual toothbrushing in studies lasting from four weeks up to three months. These findings verify those seen in the individual reports of clinical studies 
testing Philips Sonicare and manual toothbrushes, reinforcing the evidence base of the superiority of sonic power to manual toothbrushing. Building on randomized parallel comparisons of Philips Sonicare products in clinical trial settings, the fourth manuscript compares two power toothbrushes, Philips Sonicare Diamond Clean and Oral-B 7000, used in the respective deep clean modes. This was a large study with 284 total study subjects, divided evenly per product group. Eligible participants had at least moderate levels of gingivitis, but were otherwise generally healthy adults who were non-smokers and manual toothbrush users. Efficacy metrics for this study, again, included surface plaque, gingival inflammation, and gingival bleeding. Eligible subjects were randomly assigned to use either Diamond Clean with a premium plaque control brush head or an Oral-B 7000 with cross-action brush head and a smart guide accessory with both in deep clean mode for a six-week period of home use. The study examiners were blinded to the treatment assignment of the study participants. The results are again presented as mean percent reduction from baseline. Note that both products show significant improvements from baseline for all efficacy metrics at all time points. However, the differences are more pronounced for the Diamond Clean group. The differences are statistically significant in each case for the reduction of gingival inflammation, gingival bleeding, and surface plaque. Switching product focus, the final publication in the special issue presents details of an evaluation of Philips Sonicare Airflos Pro interdental cleaning device. This product was developed based on the insight that while patients are aware that using string floss is important to their oral health, they have a difficult time adopting a daily flossing habit. Airfloss Pro was designed to provide users a more pleasant and easy to use alternative without losing the oral health benefits of string floss. This study was designed, statistically speaking, as a non-inferiority trial. That is to say, the margin of efficacy was to define a boundary within which the interdental cleaning products could be declared similarly effective as opposed to designing a trial that intended to show a statistical differences between these modalities of interproximal cleaning. Moving on to the details of the study, again, it was a randomized parallel design. Eligible subjects had mild to moderate levels of gingivitis and were self-reported as non-habitual users of string floss. There were a total of four study groups, manual toothbrush alone, manual toothbrush plus string floss, manual toothbrush plus air floss used with Listerine rinse, and manual toothbrush plus air floss used with BreathRx rinse. Subjects assigned to a string floss or air floss group were to perform interdental cleaning once daily, and toothbrushing was performed twice daily for all groups. Before we look at the results, a comment on the air floss pro groups. As experience is the primary contributor to low compliance with string floss, the intent of the air floss experience is to be the one that users prefer and thus are more likely to adopt. In extensive usability testing performed on the air floss product, the overwhelming majority preferred its use with the mouth rinse in the fluid reservoir compared to water. Thus, the study included two rinse formulations that contain essential oils with and without CPC to cover the span of active ingredients a patient is likely to encounter. Again, we present the results with three graphs illustrating mean percent reduction from baseline for the efficacy metrics of gingival inflammation, gingival bleeding, and surface plaque. Each graph shows the results of all four treatment groups reported for each metric. The manual toothbrush only group is reported in blue, String floss is reported in purple, and the air floss pro groups are reported in red and orange. Statistical differences were observed between all added interproximal cleaning modalities compared to manual toothbrushing alone, for all metrics at all time points. For the non-inferiority assessment between the string floss and the air floss pro groups, the gingivitis and plaque reduction outcomes were within the statistically predefined boundaries 
in which similarity could be declared. As such, we conclude that the use of the Airfloss Pro with rinse as an adjunct to manual toothbrushing is at least as good as an adjunct into proximal cleaning with string floss. This establishes Philips Sonica Airfloss Pro as an effective alternative for patients that have not been able to establish an effective habit of cleaning with string floss. These new publications provide strong evidence for both Philips Sonica Power Toothbrushes and Airfoss Pro to reinforce our brand promise of improving oral health through meaningful innovation. We invite you to review the details of each of these studies in the Journal of Clinical Dentistry, as this presentation was limited to a high-level summary. Our intent with the complete manuscripts was to provide as much detail and transparency as possible so that you understand the full scope of the quality of our products and the quality of work that goes into ensuring that our innovations provide clinical value for your patients. Further, as our pipeline is driven by experimental evidence from countless in vitro and in vivo validation studies, you deserve to see and evaluate for yourself the clinical evidence that clearly and expressly guides your home care oral hygiene recommendations. I sincerely thank you for joining me for this podcast. If you have any additional questions or comments, please contact your local Philips or Healthcare representative or visit our website.